How? <laughs> How do we buy a boat in Europe? I'm wow. going to talk you through the process. So basically, the very first thing we did was look around and buy a boat in Australia. Would have been, oh shit. <laughs> the Med was a very good place to start because there was no tides. But no, why is it a good place to start? Well, our sail instructor said it's like the kiddie pool of the world. Australian instructor said it's the kiddie pool of the world, but realistically it's not, is it? It's pretty crazy. Alright, people, Ryan's hair has officially hit ponytail length. It's kind of hot. <laughs> you want some of this? Now I'm going to start sharing my hair ties with you. <laughs> so the very first thing we did once we decided where we wanted to buy the boat, we went on to Yacht World, Yacht Hub, Boatsales.com.au, the Yacht Market, which is the same, and uh, Apollo Duck. Yacht World's a great place to start because it's got everything there. Yacht Hub's pretty similar as well. Uh, and then Boatsales.com.au because a lot of Australians had boats over in Europe for sale on that. Uh, the Yacht Market was, was like Yacht Hub, Yacht World, and then Apollo Duck, that's like a gum tree, like a Craigslist uh, for, for boats. So that was a really good website as well. With our research online, we found out that we wanted a Beneteau 43, Beneteau 46, or a 473. They were the three models we really wanted. With Gen is it Geno? Genoe, Geno. We wanted a Sun Odyssey 44i, or a Sun Odyssey, what, 47 DS or 50 something DS. Um, they were the kind of boats we looked at there. We did look at Bavaria's, but we wanted a Yanmar engine, and they had their Volvo Penta, which nothing wrong with that. We just wanted a Yanmar because apparently it's easy to get parts, easy to maintain, and I knew how to work with them. So the price we were looking at, our price range was around about $100,000 to $200,000 Australian. That was actually after my favorite boat of all that I really loved was a Beneteau 57. Like, I still want that boat. So Beneteau, if you're hearing this, just letting you know, sponsor us for a future boat. But after the Beneteau 57 with the price and everything, the maintenance cost and you know flying back and forth and looking at it, we just didn't have that in our budget. But we found a really good one was around about three hundred something thousand dollars that we were going to buy, and luckily we didn't because that's a huge boat and everything would have been a lot more expensive, and we would have been living off rice. Not even we would have just been living off air. Yeah, we wouldn't have been able to, like yeah. We wouldn't have been able to leave anywhere. Yeah. I don't even think we would have to drop anchor out find outside of a marina and just sit there in it because that's how much it costs. The other thing now with prices that really took into account was rigging. So some boats, they're gonna be re-rigged, especially for insurance. You gotta have it rigged every 10 years to get your insurance. So this boat right now, we're insured with everything but the rigging because this rigging is 10 years old now. So that's probably the next big thing we need to do before we make any sort of Atlantic crossing or, or something. The other thing was water maker, life raft, solar panels, a generator, air conditioning, uh, there's just, so many little things that can really make the price of a boat that much more. So you've got to take them into account when looking at boats as well. Once we found about six boats we wanted, we flew over to Europe, went to Italy, we looked in Croatia and Greece. Uh, they were the, the three we countries. We tied in with a wedding though. We tied in with a beautiful wedding. Thank you, uh, Peter and Kasia. <laughs> the beautiful wedding in Poland. Yeah, so we kind of timed it to go to this wedding. Uh, for one of my best mates and at the end of that we looked at boats on the way home. Uh, we found a 473 in Greece which was awesome but we went and looked at it which is quite annoying because we actually took a separate flight there to see this boat and then a ferry to see it so it cost us a lot of money to go there and uh, the boat was just in horrible condition. I was very disappointed. Anyway, uh, I got home. We learned a lot. Though. We learned a lot though. I told the broker that we weren't interested in the boat and then they just came straight back and dropped like a big sum off the price and I was like Phew. All right, well, maybe we'll go back and have a look at it then. It looked like it needed a bit of elbow grease, but it was locked up. We couldn't really see a lot in it. We didn't inspect it that much. We just sort of looked at it. But you had... No, nah, there's a bee right in the... <laughs> right in the mic. It's like... Bzzz. You look sexy with your hair up. So the boat in Greece was good. It had huge solar panels, battery bank, water maker, copper coat anti-foul, new rigging. I flew back with my dad to go look at this boat. For a survey but when we looked at it we noticed that we had like sewage water leaking into the bilges which is like not fun to, to fix but then it just kept going on and on and on so anyway went back on the drawing board went on a site called apollo duck and uh we found sunday which was called aquarius 2 it was for sale by the owner we used a uh, broker and I just said to him, like, we found a boat, 
I want to use you to buy the boat because it's very scary sending a few hundred thousand dollars. He worked hard for us. And he worked hard too. Like he did all the paperwork for us. So basically all I did was I found the boat. I sent it to him. He dealt with the owner. We sent him money and he was the middleman and it was only a small fee. So for the sake of a few thousand dollars, uh, he did the bill of sale. We signed the contract and it was kind of like a safe way of sending the money to the owner which I'm thank God we did in the end because this boat was meant to have a water maker. And the day of signing the contract, the owner crossed out water maker. The point is, use a broker because when we went down and actually signed the paperwork, our broker drove down because they're both in the UK, gave the guy the money, got sent us all the keys. He, he did it. He was great. So I'll post his link in the bottom because he was actually a fantastic broker that we used. And he answered every email. He even called me when he needed to, which a lot of, when, as you know, looking at boats, a lot of brokers don't even write back. They just sent your tire kickers. So thank you a lot, Henry, for that. Um, so anyway, we found the boat. The next thing now is to register the boat. So registering the boat was actually a really easy but long process. So to register the boat and put it in your name, uh, you need to have the bill of sale, obviously, you need to have a deletion certificate from the old owner for his deleting the registration of his boat. You need to have a application. Sorry. Yeah. Then we needed a notice of registered user, which is a form we needed for Australia. You needed a rego payment form, so we've got to pay to register it, so we've got to fill that out. You need a declaration of ownership form, so we've got to fill that out for Australia. You need a builder certificate. If you don't have a builder certificate, then you need to have a declaration form for a builder certificate. Uh, which just pretty much you fill out all the details of boat and get it signed and declare that this is right. And then once you get all that sorted and, and it's in the process, they'll send you a marking note. So a marking note is basically you got to engrave the um, official number that they gave you and then you also need to put the stickers on the boat or paint the boat, which is obviously the new name, Sunday, blah, 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 blah Brisbane. So that is the process we went through on buying the boat. That was the quick version. That was the quick version. It took a long time. We spent a year looking for the boat. We flew to Europe twice. And uh, then we actually purchased the boat. No, don't take your hair out. I have to... I'm really... It's really annoying with that thing. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Honestly, like and subscribe to our videos. We've had a lot of people that have been liking and commenting. And you know what? It makes us feel so, so happy that you guys enjoy our video. So thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed the video of how we bought the boat. I'll post some links below as well for you. And uh, yeah, good luck in buying your boat in Europe. It's so hard. <laughs>